they have spoken about recovery coming ahead as well and they say uh, for stand alone business demand environment is benign across sectors and geographies but they expect stable demand and ramp up of new business to drive top line growth in FY24 the numbers look decent the uh, stand alone margins have come at 25.8% versus 24.7% uh, their ebitda has grown by 26% leading to a profit growth of around 28% so good numbers and the stock is high by 2% Okay, the stock uh, that's Bharat Forge for you. Happiest Minds is also on our radar. The company reported a good top-line growth, but margins have contracted sequentially. Also, they're saying that they will update their FI24 revenue guidance of 25% in October because they're still waiting for some acquisitions to um, you know play out. Uh, I caught up with the company's MD and CEO Venka Draman Narayanan and the executive vice chairperson. Joseph Anantaraju I began the conversation by talking about their FY24 guidance listen in the acquisition pipeline that we had uh, had companies ranging from 10 million dollars to 40 million dollars and this is what we had factored in while we talked about our revenue guidance of 25% for the current year uh, if you recall like we don't uh, divide our uh, revenue growth aspiration or guidance for the year and so again it is not an it's a malcom of both of them and we had these uh, couple of companies which we hope to close uh, to add to the revenue numbers and that that's what uh, that's the background for making that statement because uh, we have done about 4.7% growth in q1 with regard to total income 3.6% in operating and current dollar terms uh when you compare that with let's say 25% growth uh, people are going to ask you where is the balance going to come from so that that was the logic behind the having to clarify up front as to what we had baked into our numbers of 25% for the current year and also we have, we have always been saying that our aspiration to grow 25% that to build out of company by 2031 has got those elements of an organic and economic growth Why is it been so hard, Venkat, for you to close these M and A deals? Is it because the potential target is asking for higher valuations? Because your pipeline of companies, potential companies, is very robust. That, that's right. Uh, expectation mismatches are there, but more importantly, we need to have a meeting of minds with regard to how they will integrate into our business. Uh, it is. Because in services business, it's all about people. So there has to be this alignment of people. Once that's done, you need to make sure that uh, the the company that we get on board into the happiest minds family is is, uh, is properly aligned as to the way we do business. Because the typical structure of a, a deal is you pay a certain amount of front end, and there's a deferred payment over a period of let's say two or three years basis performance. You need to also make sure that you set them up for success. and they make those on out so it's very important otherwise you know uh, these uh, acquisitions tend to fizzle out after the couple of years that they have uh, after the first one or two years if they see that it's becoming increasingly difficult to make those on outs and and related uh, on outs coming out of it so one needs to really uh, play very carefully there are people elements that need to be taken care of so yes valuation uh, is one key point but more important is to see how we can align uh, the acquired company into our business and we can get buy-ins so that they uh, they see that the earnouts that are being promised are paid okay so valuation and perhaps culture issues uh joseph uh, q1 revenue growth uh, q1 uh, revenue growth in constant currency has been about 13 to 14% is that the organic revenue growth rate for the rest of the year do you see the macro improving worsening what's your read for the next three quarters and can you explain the margin drop that we've seen sequentially so uh, first give a little bit of color on uh, you know the uh, the revenue growth that we've had and where we see uh, opportunities for the remaining three quarters as you would have seen from our result i think the two uh, verticals that have uh, done well for us three verticals i would say uh, at tech uh, bfsi and uh, healthcare which we started calling out as a separate vertical and we have had a, a, a few closures uh, in that vertical uh, if you look at at tech uh, you know the, 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 we've had closures both in india and in uh, us and uh, it's, it's been both new customers and growth in existing customers bfsi again you know the segment that we played in uh, it's not the large banks and uh, we've seen a good growth out there healthcare uh, and life sciences there are multiple segments out there 
where we've been able to build uh, capabilities and depth, and I think that will continue to be an area that will give us uh, growth. Joseph, since you spoke about the three sectors where you've seen growth, I would like to draw your attention to the three verticals where revenues have contracted. One is uh, high tech, where revenues are down 21% quarter on quarter, and the other two are travel and retail, approximately a 5% decline. What led to that? So if you look at uh, uh, the uh, high tech vertical, there's a reclassification that's happened out there. So earlier we had uh, classified some of our health tech companies in uh, high tech and if you notice healthcare now is 12.6%. So we had a couple of accounts from uh, manufacturing and a few accounts from high tech that got reclassified. If not for that, I think uh, the percentage of revenue, the revenue share of high tech would have stayed the same. Uh, as far as retail is, is concerned, uh, we had one large customer in the Middle East, uh, which was a PIM code implementation that came to an end in Q4, and we had talked about it in Q4 as well because it had, uh, you know, we had seen a drop from Q3 to Q4, and that totally closed down in Q4 actually, and that's what you've seen in Q1 uh, getting uh, reflected in terms of uh, a drop. Otherwise, we've had a couple of customers in the retail CPG segment that have uh, ramped up quite well, you know, one of them being one of the uh, top three uh, CPG companies uh, in the world. Uh, on uh, travel and media entertainment, it's mostly media and entertainment because we have very little uh, travel business. And here, one of our large customers, uh, they're going through uh, you know, a name that is very well known. They're going through their own internal uh, reorganization and re-strategization, as a result of which some of the new initiatives have been put on hold and they've they've gone through a round of uh, cost cutting and that's what you see reflected in some of the numbers out there. But we expect this to be a, you know, a, a, a temporary phenomenon because end of the day, some of the work that we're doing for them on streaming TV and analytics, those have to uh, continue and they have to take these to market. Hmm. Uh, Venkat, very quickly, uh, could you tell us what led to the margin contraction and the guidance and margins? Guidance on margins, uh, we continue to hold up between the range of 22 to 24 percent. And the 13th quarter in succession, we have beaten that and we have been ahead of 25 percent. Uh, going into Q2, uh, we have the wage increases coming in effective first July. So that won't be a temporary, uh, I, I would think, a contraction in margins. But, and we have to make that up through volume and uh, value loans. Growth as we go into the quarters of Q2 and forward. As well as Q4 to Q1, uh, the slight dip in margin was on account of uh, the, the wage uh, adjustment because we had slight increase in the on site part of the business. That's, that's one. And the second thing is uh, typically in the fourth quarter, you have some reversals coming in on account of. Uh, provisions that get reversed, uh, like the variable pay or sales incentive kind of thing. So that that, that contributes to a percentage or not, uh, or even lesser. But it does contribute to uh, wage costs in, in the fourth quarter because you even the cost out over the four quarters, assuming a certain achievement, and uh, that there will be reversals in some heads and there will be catch up in the other. In Q4, there was a little uh, more of reversals, I would say. And other than that, there is no change between the last quarter to this quarter. Okay, that's the word coming in from Happiest Minds. Uh, let's now focus on the music.